Hey guys, how's it going? So there will soon be a complete firearms ban at the Michigan State Capitol building. And in this video, I'm going to tell you how they plan to do it, who is going to do it, and a little bit of a history of how we arrived to where we are now. So this was announced this past Friday at the Michigan State Capitol Commission meeting. We're gonna get into a little bit of more of who they are in just a few minutes. But I wanna say first and foremost, this Capitol building, it is not owned by the governor of Michigan. It is not owned by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, nor is it owned by the President of the Senate, and it is also not owned by the representatives and senators. It is owned by you, all of you who live in Michigan, work in Michigan, and do business in Michigan, and all of those who have lived in Michigan for the nearly 145 years that this Capitol building has been in Lansing. So there's already restrictions. I'm gonna go over that in a second, but they are going to put in a sweeping ban of all firearms within the Capitol building and possibly even on the grounds. And in order to do that, they are going to put in five detection devices. So of all the different entrances of the Capitol, they're gonna narrow it down to five that can be used for entrance with some other doors being used only for exits. At four of these doors, which are what is accessible to the public, they will put in these advanced firearm scanners, weapon scanners, if you will, that will detect not only traditional metal guns and other weapons, but will even be able to detect more modern technology like 3D printed guns and things like that. That will be at four of the entrances, these walkthrough weapons scanners. This is comprehensive state-of-the-art technology from what I understand. With the fifth entrance that's usually just reserved for caterers and contractors to use, we'll have a traditional metal detector. Now, there's more. To enforce this, they are also going to be adding 30 new officers for part of these securing these entrances, which there will be 10 additional state troopers, 10 additional House of Representatives Sergeant at Arms, and also 10 additional Senate Sergeant at Arms. And they are also going to add in new software that will integrate the cameras to recognize security alerts and the presence of a gun, whether it's on the grounds or within the building. So, like I said earlier, it's not owned by the governor of Michigan, and this actually isn't an executive order from the governor. Now, we have an executive branch, that's the governor. We also have a legislative branch, which creates laws. And I would note, all laws repugnant to the Constitution are null and void. Marbury v. Madison, very early United States Supreme Court precedents. I would also note the Second Amendment, obviously. The right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And Michigan Constitution, Article 1, Section 6. Every person has a right to keep and bear arms in defense of himself and the state. But they're not too worried about that anymore. They're actually only worried about law-abiding citizens like you. Because criminals don't follow laws and these new restrictions will only affect the law-abiding, obviously, and make it less safe for you to visit or do business at the state capitol. Well, this isn't a law being proposed by the legislature either. This is something getting put in by the... Michigan State Capitol Commission, which a lot of you probably don't even know exists. Let me say this first, though. This is going to cost a lot of money. The exact cost is unknown. However, in Whitmer's executive budget recommendation, they've set aside $5 million. And the Capitol Commission says that should be plenty enough for these scanners and additional software. We're talking deep nanny state type stuff here. Software that could sense and detect things yeah you can imagine where this is going to go now there's also going to be the cost of the payroll the benefits and the additional cost that's associated with 30 additional officers that would be ongoing so they start off saying oh this will only be five million dollars which to me is a lot of money i work hard for my money and i know you guys do too but then there's going to be massive residual costs now Nobody's going to be exempt from this except for on-duty police officers in the course of their duties. It does not exempt the general public who owns the building. It does not exempt 
actually any sitting representative or senator, and it certainly does not exempt any of their staff. So, how do we get here? Well, for over 140 years, people peacefully carried firearms, whether open or concealed, whether handgun or long gun, in the state capitol. And this has never been an issue, which shouldn't be a surprise, because if you've read the book by Dr. John Lott, more guns equals less crime, not the other way around. And when they make gun-free zones, they make criminal empowerment zones. For example, schools that allow teachers to carry. There has never been a school shooting during school hours in schools where teachers carry. See, criminals are empowered when good guys with a gun cannot be armed because the only thing that can stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. And this is literally proven statistically. Well, they want to make this a gun-free zone, which in my opinion will invite criminals in and make honest, law-abiding people, safe people, less safe and less secure in their own state capital. It will also make the legislators less safe, in my opinion. So let's go back to April 30th. And I'm going to talk about who this commission is in just a minute. There's a lot to this. And I've actually covered all of this in the past on this channel. But for those of you that are new, I'm going to go over this. And for those of you that have been watching my channel this whole time, thank you for still being here. And maybe you'd like a little refresher. So let's go back to the heart of the lockdowns. Michigan's had some of the most cruel, and I would note ineffective, and draconian lockdowns in the whole country. You couldn't buy seeds. You couldn't go out on a boat unless, of course, you were the governor's husband. Then, apparently, you could get into the marina early, if you guys remember that. It was really, really hard for people to get by. And it was illegal for me to cut grass. And it was illegal for a lot of people to even live their lives or leave their homes at that time. Well, being frustrated and having the First Amendment protected right to petition your government for redress of grievance and to peaceably assemble, a lot of people assembled at the Capitol on April 30th. 2020 and it was a second amendment rally and it was also a protest for these severe lockdowns and i was there that day and i was in the capitol building that day and i actually posted a video on this channel showing you some of what happened inside yeah there were some people yelling at police officers in there yelling at them which to me is first amendment protected speech obviously i did not see one person raising guns at anybody Nobody threatening anyone with a firearm. However, this created a lot of concern. And it was just a couple weeks later in May of 2020 that Attorney General Dana Nelson told this Capitol Commission that they needed to do something about the open carry of guns within the building. Now, at that time, they said, no, we don't have the authority to do this. We can't ban guns. We're the Capitol Commission. We're supposed to be ahead of in charge of interior and exterior grounds maintenance and things like that. It's just not within our purview. We cannot do it. Now let's fast forward to January 6th, 2021, where there was a protest at the United States Capitol. Well, shortly thereafter, this renewed call to ban guns from within inside the Michigan Capitol building reached a new uh, vigor and they very quickly, the Capitol Commission, banned the open carry of firearms. Well, they said you could still carry a firearm if you had a CPL. Now, people quickly noticed that, okay, you can lawfully carry with a CPL open or concealed. So they came through with an updated procedure, and this is it right here, May 17th, 2021. And this is right now the current procedure. I can't say law because it's the Capitol Commission that created this, and most people don't even know who they are, but they do exist. And this is where we stand right now with another update. No person may carry a firearm in the public areas inside the Michigan State Capitol building. Exceptions to this include the Michigan State Police, Capitol Security Officers, Sergeant at Arms of the Michigan Senator House of Representatives, law enforcement officers licensed by the Michigan Commission on Law Enforcement Standards in the performance of their official duties if the officer is in uniform or otherwise properly identified. So this does not cover off-duty cops either. And a person with a valid concealed pistol license issued by any state who is carrying a concealed weapon in compliance with Michigan CPL regulations. So three months later in May of 2021, they said concealed weapon. So that makes it where as we stand right now, only members of the public can go in there carrying concealed with a valid CPL. 
Now, last month, Speaker of the House Joe Tate added another directive, order, rule, if you will. This stuff's so convoluted, it doesn't even make any sense. That no House staff member could carry a gun at all within the Capitol building or the surrounding areas. I also believe the Anderson House office building was also included in that order from Speaker Tate. Now, this did not affect the general public, and it does not affect the representatives and senators themselves, but this new rule did affect all of the staff, the aides, all the various people who work underneath the House of Representatives. So that was a recent ban that was put in just about a month ago in March of 2023. Now they're looking to ban all guns with these new state-of-the-art weapon scanners, metal detectors, new software integrations, and things like that. Now, there was a Michigan State Capitol Commission meeting on Friday. And who is the State Capitol Commission? Well, here's the meeting, first and foremost. I'll leave a link to the Michigan State Capitol Commission so you guys can find out that they exist, because a lot of people don't know that. And we are going to see on here Capitol Facilities, Underground Maintenance Facility, okay, and Capitol Security. So, with this being a historic building, Governor Snyder signed a package of laws into effect in 2013, about 10 years ago, deeming the Capitol building a historical building. Now, part of that was to establish this Michigan State Capitol Commission to maintain and keep the, the grounds. We have lots of old paintings in the Capitol. It's actually a very, very beautiful building. Things like that need maintained. You need to keep the walls painted. You need to keep the grass mowed. Plant bushes, new bushes when old ones die, keeping the hedges trimmed, the sidewalks cleared, snow removal. I mean, there's all these things that you would need for grounds. Well, now that it was deemed a historical building through public act, they needed to establish this state capitol. The Michigan State Capitol, a national historic landmark. And this is from their site right here. And I'm just going to read the brief, basically thing on their website, the brief introduction. The Michigan State Capitol Commission consists of, now hold on, wait till you hear who it consists of. Now, before I say that, keep in mind that the Michigan Governor, Democrat, Lieutenant Governor, Democrat, Secretary of State, Democrat, Attorney General, Democrat, we have a very narrowly controlled Democrat House and very narrowly controlled Democrat Senate. So everybody in power that has the majority in Lansing right now are Democrats, and let's listen to who appoints people on this board. The Michigan State Capitol Commission consists of the Secretary of the Senate, the Clerk of the House of Representatives, two individuals jointly appointed by the Secretary of the Senate and the Clerk of the House, and two individuals appointed by the Governor. Now, we could argue on whether the Clerks of the Senate and House are partisan or not. However, I would note that the Michigan House of Representatives and Senate do vote on who the clerk is going to be. And obviously the governor is a partisan who gets to appoint two individuals to this commission. So we have six commissioners and an executive director. Here's what their purpose is. The commission manages, maintains, and restores the Michigan State Capitol building and its grounds. Like I mentioned earlier, a window gets broken. Okay, you need to maintain that. Sure. The walls need painted. The lawn needs mowed. The commission appoints an individual to manage the day-to-day -day operation of the site and employs staff to carry out these responsibilities. There's janitors in there. Okay. The commission makes recommendations to the governor, the Senate, and the House of Representatives regarding funding for the site. Well, apparently there is a budget from Whitmer that is going to allow the funds for this to happen. So there you go. 145 years, guns have been allowed to be carried in there. Just recently, restrictions have been added in the last couple years. And as I would note, the more restrictions we keep adding, yeah, the more violence keeps going up because bad people don't generally follow laws and good people don't generally need laws. So we're back to a commission of people who are unelected, most of you don't even know they exist, is now going to make the Capitol building a complete and utter gun-free zone, hire more police at the taxpayer's expense, integrate state-of-the-art software, 
traditional and non-traditional weapons scanning systems. And this is for the inside of the building right now. They're seeking bids to get this information, to get all of this stuff implemented. Seeking bids on the equipment, the logistics, the software, all of this. They're actively seeking bids as we speak. And they're saying it's going to be a little more challenging for them, but they're also contemplating banning firearms at and around the grounds of the Capitol, which is also public property. And also this building is public property. Well, none of your state representatives or senators voted on this, like I just said before. However, if this is a concern to you, which I'm assuming it is, obviously, I would still recommend you get a hold of your Michigan representative, Michigan senator, because since they do hold the power of the purse, although it is a Democrat-controlled majority that has now dozens of gun control bills, and some of which have already passed into law, many, many more to come. They've said it many times, and I assure you this is just the beginning of the gun control in Michigan. I still think you should reach out to your representative and senator and let them know that you do not want this gun ban. You could mention reasons that it infringes upon your Second Amendment protected right, your Michigan Constitution Article 1, Section 6 protected right, and also just the fiscal irresponsibility of this. They're saying they're willing to throw up to $5 million at this, but how much is it going to cost to keep employing these 30 additional state troopers and sergeant-at-arms into what, perpetuity? Yeah. And then what happens next if something happens? You see where this keeps going. Because where there's more guns in the hands of good people, there's less crime. And criminals don't follow law, therefore them restricting the good law-abiding people from being able to protect themselves and to be able to potentially even protect their representative if they're walking from the one building to the other. As soon as you get rid of that, it's going to be a criminal empowerment zone. And I hope this never happens, but it'll probably make it more dangerous, not less dangerous, at the Michigan State Capitol building. All right, guys, there's plenty more to come on Michigan and many other things. But think about this. A capital commission, which is kind of like deep state bureaucracy, wanting to ban, well, they're going to ban, all guns at the state capitol. And then we also have the ATF getting ready to create potentially up to 40 million felons with the pistol braces in America. We've gotten to the point where not only would any law repugnant to the Constitution need to be null and void, like Marbury v. Madison says, but now we have deep state rules that are carrying force and effect of law that in many cases are even more draconian than the actual unconstitutional laws themselves. Alright, thanks for watching, and have a good one.